back. The road to Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney Plus begins. I really didn't want to reshoot all this, but just full disclosure, I had a little bit of a error with my teleprompter and camera that caused me to read a little bit too high like this instead of like this. So just bear with me. Enjoy the content. I'm aware of it. I didn't want to re-record all that. Thanks. I've always loved this movie. Always. The degree of that has varied or waned over time, but in recent years, I've discovered entirely new ways to appreciate this gem. It also helps. I was the perfect target audience and all the toys, video games, and merchandising solidify it in my memory. Also, Qui-Gon Jinn and young Kenobi. First off, as the last Star Wars film primarily shot on 35mm, but first used digital in some scenes, it's gorgeous. Holds up wonderfully in 4K. Many of the effects haven't aged a day. Some have, but wonderfully. It even has the most miniatures of any Star Wars film, fun fact. It tells a new, understandably divisive, but important story that lays the groundwork for the trilogy with masterful world building, incredibly directed action, consistent editing, and a sense of wonder throughout. George Lucas doing his thing. Pod racing and Duel of the Fates, as well as Darth Maul in general, are iconic. Expectations got in the way of people enjoying this. The originality is mind blowing and I eat it up. So let's address the major complaints and their validity. So here's a couple not so rapid fire bullet points. I like the political intrigue. I think it plays into the world building that I've already mentioned and it makes the prequels feel unique. Jake Lloyd's performance is endearing, end of story. Perhaps he should have been aged up a bit. I see why they did it the way they did, and maybe they should have had Hayden Christensen from the start, but it's neither, it's neither here nor there. It could have helped Attack of the Clones, but I'm okay with how they did it. It makes the, uh, the downfall later on more believ believable because his attachments were stronger because he was so young. I may be in the minority here, but Natalie Portman is incredibly wooden in this film. There's just no way around that for me. Many of them are. Others are dynamic. It's really inconsistent and the average to weak dialogue doesn't help. It's just George Lucas doing his thing. It doesn't really bother me, but it doesn't strengthen it either. Kind of as mentioned, the screenplay, it, it didn't win any awards and it shouldn't, but the dialogue is fine, straightforward, if on the nose. That's Lucas. More on that in the next movie, but there's nothing egregious. The pacing has sluggish portions to it at times, but it's not as glaring as I remember. There's a fair amount of action scenes sometimes there are just huge gaps between them. This isn't really a criticism, but I can see how it's a struggle for some. The biggest issue I have is a shortage of emotional storytelling. That's not, not that it's not there, but it's not present like it is all throughout the original trilogy. There's glimpses of it, such as Qui-Gon's warmth, Anakin's goodbye to his mother, and of course the gut punch of Qui-Gon's death and his funeral. These are interspersed, which doesn't make it absent, as said, but we don't really know the inner feelings of most of these characters, how they feel, and etc. Really, other than Anakin, at a few points. Uh, there's supposed to be a sense of urgency on Naboo, and we are told that the people are suffering, but we're not shown the people suffering. We're just told about it. And show me, don't tell me. There's a lot of cross-cutting between the three, actually four, major battles at the end in the third act. The palace raid is really cool. Duel of the Fates is a masterpiece. And I'm honestly okay with the space battle. Even if I wish they had dialed back all of the accidents and made Anakin's skill more intentional, still, it lines the heaviness of what's going for the fun part. But for me, the Gungan battle is way too slapstick and that's where the tonal imbalance comes into full view, the effect being all of it loses focused tension. Jar Jar doing all that by accident may be humorous, but really it's indulgent. Same with Anakin in places. Two of the four battles are really played for comic relief and it's just a constant back and forth. For whatever reason, I can forgive the intent of Anakin's more so than Jar Jar's and would have been easily fixable. Just make Anakin's skill more apparent. He did all of that on purpose. You can leave the fun dialogue, you can leave the spin move, but make it more intentional. He's, we already know he can pod race, we already know he's an accomplished pilot, so just let him show that. The story, which is king to me in everything, is complex and was always tough for me to follow as a child but I don't ever remember being confused. You can thank Jar Jar for that because he's the child's viewpoint character. All in all, Jar Jar is overused and he should have been dialed back and toned down across the board, but he's actually funny at times and can be endearing. Kids love him for a reason. I loved him as a kid. 
Um, he never bothered me. And the treatment that uh, Ahmed Best received and Jake Lloyd because of their performances in this film when they did exactly what they were told is really hateful and it's disgusting. I love both of you. I think you did an amazing job with what you were given and I've always enjoyed your performances. I think Jar Jar is a very underrated character and over hated character. He may not have the complexity of someone like Anakin Skywalker or Luke Skywalker or uh, Darth Vader or you know anyone else really but he serves his purpose and even if it can be a bit grating at times I still appreciate him. I love The Phantom Menace. I think it's a good movie. Uh, it's not perfect. It has flaws. All films do because there's in my opinion no such thing as an imperfect piece of art or film but it's great i give star wars episode one the phantom menace four out of five stars it's really great to be back doing reviews again um hopefully to be more consistent this time i'll keep doing this uh new videos hopefully every week here soon and uh, i'm excited for obi-wan kenobi this week so please subscribe give the video a like and share it with your friends please